it's Wednesday, so you know what that means. Pop Dust presents hour number two. Shout out to Nella Cole for stopping by and holding things down with Dan Victor. I am your host, Decent, and today's guest is from across the pond. I like to think of him as UK's version of Johnny Cash. He may feel otherwise, but nonetheless, we have Stealth in the building, y'all. Hello, everybody. Hey, I'll take that. I'll take UK's version of Johnny Cash. I love yeah, that. Man. For branding purposes, I'm going to need copyrights and royalties. I'm not sure how the money conversion works, but we'll figure it out. But thanks a lot, man, for stopping by. Thanks for having me. The music is amazing. Thank you. You know, you look incredible. Thank you. I'm slowly having a man crush. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to leave this building. My head's going to be too I big. I want you to leave. But, but nonetheless, once again, you're from the UK. You're here in New York on sort of a press run of sorts, you know. And Pop Dust has been one of your stops, if not the best stop. I'm biased. <laughs> but tell the people a little bit about yourself. Name, social security, where your parents <laughs> live, all that good stuff that the people want to know. So uh, my artist name is Stealth. Uh, I'm from Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Uh, lived in London for a few years, and I've kind of been doing blues, soul, uh, music for the last sort of three or four years. Um, yeah, just kind of slowly grinding away and finally been able to make it over to the US. Well, he's being very modest, as you can see. <laughs> so in order to eliminate some of that modesty, we're going to have him jump into a song. Cool. And this song you're about to perform is? It's Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Now, every time I ask, I always say at my gigs, I say, like, does anybody watch Suits? And nine times out of ten, there's only one person who puts their hand up. So, yeah, hopefully... With Luckily, in this case, is you're only in front of one person. <laughs> yeah. I watch Suits. Oh, so yes. So, we're keeping it up. Yes. <laughs> stealth. May I call you Stealth? Yes, of course, man. Cool. You're from Birmingham, England. Yeah. Holy Sabbath. <laughs> oh, your accent... In case just, the accent's just... The accent's just so people. very, very, like... Very, very Genuinely profound. Genuinely flying here, because I came from Canada beforehand, a woman said, oh, my God, you've got such a strong southern accent. I was like, are you deaf? <laughs> <laughs> So what was life like growing up in Birmingham? It was know? great. I mean, you know, I, I lived just slightly outside. Um, and I had a very, you know, I, was, I had a very good uh, upbringing, you know, parents that loved me, an annoying little sister that I kind of like. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was really, really good. And, um, you know, I went to school in, uh, in a small town in Litchfield and then kind of just found the town was a little bit too small to contain all this ego and had to move <laughs> to a slightly bigger city. So how did you get started or introduced into music? Um, well, actually, my mum my mom years and years and years ago worked at a record label, so we've always had music in the house. I mean, she was nothing, no one, like, no big decision maker. She just worked in the IT department. Mm. Um, so she couldn't make or break my career, disclaimer. <laughs> and she left well before I was actually getting signed. Um, but yeah, so we always had music on the house. I was a massive Elvis fan as a kid. Um, I used to dance around in like shiny pajamas and like, you know, put shows on for people. So that was kind of always my thing. And that's something that you still do to this day. Still to this day, yeah. I mean, you know, you wait, Facebook Live tomorrow night, me in my shiny pajamas. That's no I'll be there. <laughs> but once again, you're from Birmingham. Um, was Sabbath ever an influence? Seeing as how you yeah, came from of the course. Same place? I mean, there's loads of um, you know, there's loads of great bands from. Um, you know, I think Robert Plant was from Birmingham as well, mm -hmm. and you know, all all those guys. Ozzy Osbourne obviously was a huge influence. In fact, my uncle had his had a house next to his, um, and one of my first. I mean, I don't know if they're big in the US, like Slade, where were like you know, obviously it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually did one of my first ever gigs at the Working Men's Club that he was brought up on. Oh, uh, Beach that Working Men's Club. Nice. Speaking of Ozzy, I actually have an autographed picture of Ozzy Osbourne. Oh wow! Hanging up on my wall when I was a kid. Ah, it's class. Yeah, yeah. So, you have more so of a soul sound to you, you know, from the likings of like you know Howling Wolf mm -hmm. and you know Muddy Waters, and it's kind of a sound that's been in the last few years or so synonymous with the UK, with the likes of yourself, Adele. Amy Winehouse, rest in peace, um, Rag and Bowman, you know, even Sam Smith to a degree. Yeah. What is it about soul music that resonates so much with the people out in the UK? I don't know, I just think it's, it, it's music that's like filled with emotion and feeling. Uh, and I think in general, um, 
considering we're in a, a, a nation of people that don't like to express any emotion, um, you know, you've got a lot of closeted um, emotional people. And I think it's like a bit of, I mean, you, you look at like, even back in the day, the old school soul records that came over to the UK, like you look at like Al Wilson, The Snake mm -hmm. and stuff like that, which were huge Northern soul records. Uh, there's always been a desire for real music in the UK. Um, and I think now, just now, you know, artists like Hosier, Rag and Bone Man, Adele, Sam Smith, are just giving artists like myself a real platform and like having giving us a, a bit of a soul revival in the UK. Mm -hmm. oh, Paolo Nettini as well. I always forget him. He's amazing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it seems like more so you guys are like taking that sound and paying homage to it. You know, obviously, you guys are doing a very, very good job in doing so. But you're also adding a added twist because a lot of these songs are very, very anthemic and very, very big and very, very powerful. Is that something that you feel like the UK will be known for when it comes to the reinvention of soul? Um, I don't know. It's a, that's a really tough question. Um, I mean, I don't want to say anything disclaimer, and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen, and then it's like Sean was like completely wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean. I think just in general, I think that sound is, you know, is, is starting to come back. Even though even you look at artists across the, uh, in the US, like Imagine Dragons, um, okay, Kaleo, they're not American, they're, they're Icelandic, but that sound in general across yeah. the soul kind of thing, it just brings it more modern and it makes it more, and also you've got to remember that Radio a couple of years ago weren't picking up artists like us. The only people picking artists up like myself or you know Rag and Bone Man or Hosier, Kaleo, it was sync. You know, the, you look at the Black Keys, like it was all TV stuff. Mm -hmm. And the way you got a big TV sync was by making a big track. Yeah. So that was kind of one of the ways of our, like our ways of our way in almost. And speaking of syncs, um, song you just performed, Judgment Day, as you said, featured on Suits, and I read that. During that time, you were actually semi-homeless. Yeah, I mean, I like thing is, I'm, I'm, I mean, my, my mom would kill me if I said I was completely homeless. But, That's why I said semi, yeah, mom. Semi, That's yeah. why I said semi. Um, I basically, being from Birmingham, I always had a home in Birmingham, um, so I could always go back there. But the work was in London, mm -hmm. and I had to make a choice whether I was going to give up or whether I was going to go home. And there was a genuine two-week moment at home where I was just like, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, but then, you know, certain things happened and I was starting to just drive down and sofa surf, do a bit of an Ed Sheeran and stay on like people's sofas and sleep in my car a few nights and stuff like that. And the night that sink, that suit sink happened, um, I was actually sleeping on my mate Luke, uh, Luke Jacobs house mate. Um, I was actually sleeping on his uh, floor and uh, I remember because obviously I was in the UK and it opens up early here, early in the morning here. And at like sort of four or five in the morning, I was just awake watching my Twitter go insane. Shazam was going mental. It was just like one of the, the best, um, best moments of my life. And they, those moments come very few and far between in this industry. So it's one thing that, although it was kind of crap because I was asleep <laughs> on someone's floor um, and a complete juxtaposition of emotions, but yeah, it was amazing. One of the best moments of my life. Luke, you now have the most famous floor in the UK right now. So make sure that spot that he slept yeah. in, you preserve it. You He's know. moved out. We've actually lived together now, me and Luke do. I, I suggest you go back, Luke, and find that spot <laughs> and find a way to preserve it because it's a moment in history that <laughs> needs to be kept and preserved. So tell us where the name Stealth came from. Oh, this is such an embarrassing story. That's um, why we're here. So, uh, so, so my mates um, thought I was, they basically all thought I looked Greek because I was slightly olive skinned. And I've kind of forever had terrible facial hair. Not to, no, no, <laughs> not to be discriminatory to Greeks, but like um, they've uh, always said that I've um, just looked Greek. So originally I was called Stelios, which isn't a very good artist name, to be fair. And um, I got shortened it to Stel, and then one of my mates started calling me Stealth. And yeah, the rest is history, really. Wow. That, so it's an odd story. No, it's, it's very, very profound. <laughs> Apparently, you got mistaken for being Greek, and now you're famous. Yeah. I think the same thing happened to John Stamos. Ah, uh, yeah, I think Like, yeah. you know, people just started calling him Stamos, and it just stuck, so they <laughs> said, why not just roll with it? Yeah, exactly. Random John Stamos trivia, only here on Podcast. <laughs> so, 
One of the things that I love so much about your music is that even though some may assume that it's brooding and very, very melancholy, mm -hmm. there's some remnants of hope just by how powerful you sing it. So what is some of the inspiration that goes into you actually writing music? Um, I try and always write from real experiences. I mean, of, of course, sometimes I have to put myself in another situation because like, yeah, there might be a lyric that's really good, but I might not have directly experienced it. And also when you go in, I'm, I'm co-writing with quite a few people, so someone else might have had a bit more of a real experience with something that I would have done. Um, but I always want to make sure that, uh, that you know, I, I don't want to be too depressing. I don't want my album to, you know, be overtly sad. I mean, in all fairness, I mean, it is quite sad. You do come from England. <laughs> yeah, it rains all the time. We, you know, we are all miserable. If you were extremely happy, I'd be worried. I mean, you say that, the weather here has been terrible. It's been horrible. I've been here for a week. It's amazing in London. <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> well, Next time you come, I'll make sure that the weather is up to par so that way you can enjoy the full New York experience. But, yeah, I mean, with, when it comes to, like, the hope and stuff like that, I think, like, um... In general, like all the old school soul tracks that I've listened to and I'm referencing back to, mm -hmm. there was always that element of, of struggle, but then, you know, then hope and, and stuff like that throughout those. So, yeah, like, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of just me not, I'm just reinventing the wheel, that sort of thing. Yeah, you can say that, you know, and it's true, because once again, you're paying homage, but it's just something about your sound that just lends itself to being so much more than it just being you taking remnants of soul and you know some of the sound that comes from England and just you know creating this entity that stuff you're talking about a lot of things that you know people can relate to but you're doing it in such a way that's only uniquely to you and a lot of the visuals that you have for some of these songs like blame and you know gotta stop loving you you know they're really really songs that people can connect with and they're so simplified but yet so very very big it, especially when you look at like visuals and stuff like that I think having if you look at blame for example blame was the cheapest music video I've ever done I basically didn't have a video for it had no budget for one and it's when I was unsigned actually and I went out with a handheld camera and wanted to make and my idea for that video was to juxtapose it with the oh my god I've been dumped it's really sad with a happy time of going through relationship, like, like looking back. Um, and it's been, and to this day, most people watch that video and they say it's the one that reacts the most. And that's just because it's simple. Um, and that's the kind of thing with the music. I'm not trying to do anything special. I'm not trying to do anything flash. Um, you know, I'm not hiding behind any production or anything like that. What I want to do is I want songs that are simple, that get to the point. Very like Bill Withers. Bill Withers used to write songs that just said what they were and never used to like dress it up or anything like that. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. First line of that song, you know exactly how hard, mm -hmm. how, like, how sad it is and everything. And that's all, that's all I ever want. Well, now you're not in that situation so much <laughs> as far as not having a budget because we recently heard that you're signed to Ultra Music. Yep. Ultra Music and Build a Shot together. <laughs> so, the interesting thing about your sign is that your contemporaries on the label, they're more dance oriented. Yeah. You have Calvin Harris, you have Dead Mouse, you have Stephen Aoki. Is there ever a point where you feel like you will want to step out of your comfort zone, so to say, and maybe collab if the yeah. opportunity presented itself? I mean, of course. I mean, my, my main my main aim at the moment is is like obviously focusing on my own thing and make. Basically, what I want is I want to be the artist that Kaigo or Calvin goes. I want him on my next record, mm -hmm. rather than me going begging for a collaboration. Please, please, yeah, please, 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 please. <laughs> my, my my career needs a collaboration. I'd rather be the one who goes. Look, you know, if they come, we love your voice, we love what you do, do you fancy jumping on this record? That's where I'm kind of, be, I'd be like, I'd, I'd rip their arm off. But um, at the moment, it's more about me building my own thing. Um, and especially with Ultra as well, because they're known for the dance thing. It's very much a scary time for them as it is for me. Um, you know, and just, it, we're both kind of just seeing what happens and hopefully, because um, the easy thing would be would just be do a big remix of one of my songs and, and see what happens. But, but you want to be genuine and organic. Yeah, and, and I'm, I've I'm, I'm, I've been very lucky with the, with Ultra. Um, they've supported me like a family, like really, really looked after me, and they're fully behind the project as it stands. So, you know, I couldn't be happier.
Yeah, but this is me just being biased, but I feel like those collaborations, as organic as you want them to happen, they're definitely going to happen well, I'd hope so. organically. <laughs> and speaking of the label, you care to show them why they should put their money on you by doing another song for us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this next one is called Got to Stop Loving You. It's out everywhere. Um, and yeah, it's so just basically about uh, being dumped, which is obviously crap. Um, and uh, just kind of, but knowing that it was the right thing for them to do, but it still hurts, and you know you're not going to get them back. There's no point fighting for them. You've just got to stop loving them. So, so once again, you're a throwback, in a sense, and a special guest <laughs> in the most literal and figurative sense. So I think it's time that we reintroduce an old favorite to the Pop Dust Faithful. Stealth, could you do me a favor and hand me that box that's sitting next to you? Yep. Oh, this is ominous. Don't no, tell me about this bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the return of the one, the only, the incomparable Pop Dust Magic Box. Breaking this out because stealth is the man. And with that being said, this is how this works, okay. my friend. You're gonna dig in this box. Okay. And you're gonna pull out a question, and then you're gonna answer said question. <laughs> oh god, this no matter how so fast. embarrassing. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Yeah. Or incriminating, All right. it may be. Trust okay. me, you'll be fine. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm just gonna give it a little shake. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, just dig right on in. Right. Okay. There you go. What was your favorite childhood TV show? Dragon Ball Z, by far. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Easy. I feel like we let you off the hook with that one. Okay. Dragon Ball Z. It was amazing. We're going to do another one. We're going to do another one. Okay. Okay. I know Jacob Banks loves to, um, Dragon Ball Z as well. Okay. Another Brummie? One more. One more. One more. Who is the biggest hazy you've ever experienced in your career? Mm. Ooh, do you know what? It's myself. Really? Yeah, it's me. Mm. It's me. No matter what I do, I, I second guess everything I do. Because um, everyone else has only really... I've never really experienced anybody... I've, I've experienced people I've never wanted to work with again, but that's purely on a creative thing. Um, everyone I've kind of come into contact with has been pretty good. But no, the biggest hater in my career is myself. Because you have such a high expectation for yourself, you feel like you said now, now everyone's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> you took all the magic out of Magic Box, though. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, but, Sorry. But maybe it's just because you have such a high bar that you set for yourself. Everything that's been happening for you in the last two years or so has just been a constant roll of momentum. Yeah. And, you know, being in the position that you were in and being semi-homeless, I'm pretty sure that's something that you don't want to go back to. So yeah. you, you put that pressure on yourself. But... We at Pop Dust here feel like it's completely unnecessary. You got it. Got the jeans, the white t-shirt, and that's the winning combination <laughs> to all things music related. Am I right? Am I right? Yep. Am I, I right? I hope so. Yep. You're winning already. Fashion sense is on par, and that's what's gonna take you to the top, my friend. That's what I want. <laughs> so let the people know anything that you have coming up, any new visuals, projects, shows, so they can get in touch with you and follow your yeah your wave of momentum. So I've just I had a single out called Gotta Stop Living You, which you just heard there. Um, that's on Spotify, Apple Music. Um, I've got a new single coming out, Truth Is, next month. I uh, just shot the video for that yesterday, so I'm really excited for that. Make sure you Shazam it when you hear it anywhere. Um, I've got some good news about that, but I can't say it, so I don't know why I've just said it now. <laughs> Gavin yeah. just gave him a death look, so yeah, we can't <laughs> talk about it. Just, yeah, like, just Shazam everything, and then EP will be out in, uh, hopefully, September. So, yeah. So, we got a lot of good things to look forward to from the man called Stealth, but... Brother man, thank you for stopping by. It's been an honor thank and a pleasure for, for you blessing us with your talent and your amazing stories and great hair. And I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> rambling. But for everybody here at Pop Does, I'm decent. This is Stealth. Shout out to Nella Cole for stopping by. Shout out to Dan Victor for holding down the first segment. We'll be back next week. Same Pop Does time, same Pop Does channel, same Pop Does couch, and keep it dusty.